we are here at Omaha Beach, one of landing sites during the day. June 6, 1944. The Normandy landings were the landing operations and associated airborne operations on Tuesday, June 6, 1944 of the Allied invasion of Normandy in Operation Overlord during World War II. Codename Operation Neptune and often referred to as D-Day, it was the largest seaborne invasion in history. The operation began the liberation of France and later Western Europe and laid the foundations of the Allied victory on the Western Front. Planning for the operation began in 1943. In the months leading up to the invasion, the Allied conducted a substantial military deception, codenamed Operation Bodyguard, to mislead the Germans as to the date and location of the main Allied landings. The weather on D-Day was far from ideal and the operation had been delayed 24 hours. A further postponement would have meant a delay of at least two weeks as the invasion planners had requirements for the phases of the moon, the tides, and the time of day. That meant only a few days each month were deemed suitable. Adolf Hitler placed Field Marshal Erwin Rommel in command of German forces and of developing fortifications along the Atlantic Wall in anticipation of an Allied invasion. U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt placed Major General Dwight D. Eisenhower in command of Allied forces. The target, a 50-mile or 80-kilometer stretch of the Normandy coast, was divided into five sectors, Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. We will look into Omaha. The beach is originally called Kutdo or Golden Coast. All night before the American amphibious attack on Omaha, many Allied bombers dropped hundreds of tons of bombs on German beach defenses. But in Omaha, the precision of the bombing is terribly lacking. Disabled by a very strong fog and low clouds, the bombers dropped their bombs a few seconds too early or too late. The result is catastrophic for the Allies. The 13,000 drop bombs missed their targets and explode inland a few kilometers from the beaches. After the extensive aerial and naval bombardment and airborne assault, the amphibious landings were commenced shortly after midnight, with the landing of 24,000 American, British, and Canadian airborne troops. But the strong winds blew the landing craft east of their intended positions, particularly at Utah and Omaha. In the early morning, thick smoke due to the bombing of the night masks the coast to the Allied ships. At dawn, the shooting of naval artillery directed towards the Atlantic Wall is as precise as the drops of the bomber planes. The Germans are tried by these bombardments and their losses are very low. While the American soldiers saw the coast burning and lit up with a thousand lights, during the naval bombardment, they thought that the Germans were crushed under tons of land. The first wave of assault arrives at around 6.35 am. 1,450 soldiers who are distributed in 36 landing craft. The tide is low and it discovers the mine piles installed a few months ago. The Germans, standing ready to defend their positions, await the last moment to open fire in order not to me immediately reveal their positions. As soon as the landing craft hit the beach and the soldiers tread ground in France, a shower of shells and machine gun bullets fell upon them. The first assault wave is an instant decimated. In the first five minutes of the assault, nearly 90% of its troops are put out of action. The vast majority of the officers and non-commissioned officers are wounded or killed and the survivors organize themselves as they can, in small groups, usually by affinity or by geographical origin. The Americans landing in Omaha received unequal support from tanks, unlike soldiers in Utah or an Anglo-Canadian beaches. 112 tanks, the amphibious duplex drive, DD Sherman tanks, 
equipped with snorkels and Sherman bulldozers belonging to the 741st and 743rd tank battalions are scheduled to disembark at 6.30 a.m. on Omaha to support the infantry. But from the beginning, everything went wrong at this beach. The special tanks that were supposed to support them sank in the choppy waters of the channel. The special tanks that were supposed to support them sank in the choppy waters of the channel. Only two of the 29 launch made it to the beach. With the exception of Company A, no unit of the 116th landed where it was planned. Strong winds and tidal currents carried the landing craft from right to left. The 16th Regiment on the east half of the beach did not fare much better, landing in a state of confusion with units badly intermingled. Throughout the landing, German gunners poured deadly fire into the ranks of the invading Americans. Bodies lay on the beach or floated in the water. Men sought refuge behind beach obstacles, pondering the deadly sprint across the beach to the seawall, which offered some safety at the base of the cliff. Destroyed craft and vehicles littered in the water's edge and beach. And at 0830 hours, all landing ceased at Omaha. The troops on the beach were left on their own and realized that the exits were not the way off. Slowly and in small groups, they scaled the cliffs. Meanwhile, Navy destroyers steamed in and scraping their bottoms in the shallow water, blasted the German fortifications at point-blank range. By 1200 hours, German fire had noticeably decreased as the defensive positions were taken from the rear. Then one by one, the exits were opened. The German reinforcements didn't come because the generals of the Third Reich are not well informed about the situation and do not consider it necessary to immediately send heavy means to the beaches. On the beach, vehicles that are not yet destroyed by German guns cannot progress in the midst of a terrible disorder. The dead and the wounded are littering the sands of Normandy. Carcasses of the vehicles burn, helmets, weapons, cartridge belts, clothes are abandoned and give the men who are fighting on Omaha a more than realistic glimpse of hell. Late in the afternoon, the beach is under control, but intermittently, German snipers open fire on troops. Whether they are disembarking or the wounded group waiting for their evacuation to England. In the early evening, the coastal road linking several villages were reached by various American groups. On the evening of June 6, 1944, nearly 30,000 soldiers landed on Omaha Beach. 2,500 U.S. soldiers lost their lives, were injured, missing, or were taken prisoner in the early hours of the assault. By the 24-hour mark, there were nearly 3,000 Americans killed. The bridgehead is extremely fragile and the Allies are in a weak position in Omaha. The slightest massive and organized counterattack on the part of the Germans could suddenly jeopardize the smooth running of Operation Overlord. The next 24 hours are decisive in the south and on the flanks of Omaha. This beach now bears the sad nickname Bloody Omaha. Only two of the beaches, Juno and Gold, were linked on the first day, and all five beachheads were not connected until the 12th of June. However, the operation gained a foothold that the Allies gradually expanded over the coming months. German casualties on D-Day have been estimated 4,000 to 9,000 men, while Allied casualties were documented for at least 10,000, with 4,414 confirmed dead. Later on, museums, memorials, and war cemeteries in the area were created to remember the men who lost their lives during the D-Day. And each year, many visitors come to visit those sites, including us. We're relieving the same step the soldiers did to climb up the beach to liberate France. First visit the memorial dedicated to the 5th Engineer Special Brigade, located on top of a casemate at WN62. 
There is also a Coup de Guerre or Military Cross for the Brigade. It commemorates the soldiers of the brigade that were killed during the landings on Omaha Beach on June 6, 1944. It was built on top of one of the bunkers in the beach. It was definitely a solid position for the Nazis to avoid any shots while they have the advantage view of the whole beach. The other memorial is dedicated to the 1st U.S. Infantry Division for the officers and men of the 1st United States Infantry Division who were killed fighting for the liberation of the world. A tall gray granite obelisk commemorating by name all of the 1st Infantry Division soldiers killed while fighting in the area. one of five similar memorials placed across Europe by the 1st Infantry Division. Like the Brigade Memorial, it was built on top of one of the bunkers. You can look around and explore the remaining German bunkers. On my next video, I will be talking about the Normandy Cemetery and Memorial. So you guys better check that out or you can look at the description below for the link. Alright, until next time, don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Bye! So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. And feel free to comment.